In this video, we'll talk about race conditions. Now we have talked about threads, right? And till this point, everything looks good because we now we know that threads are important if you want to execute multiple things at the same time, uh, threads will be useful. Now, sometimes we create two threads, sometimes we go for multiple threads, maybe eight threads, 10 threads, it depends upon your application. And as I mentioned before, there are certain times when you actually write threads by yourself. Otherwise, most of the time, uh, your frameworks will do it for you. Okay, let's say you create your own threads, okay? And then we know that threads are good. On the other hand, we have one more concept, right? So let, let me just write it down here. So if we talk about a concept like threads, threads are important, we know, right? Apart from this, we have one more concept, uh, which is called mutation. So if I say mutation here, now what do you mean by mutation? Mutation simply means that you can change something. Example, if we talk about variables. So primitive types, variables or object type variables, we can change them, right? Example, if you have int i, so let's say if I say int i is equal to five, and then later on, I'm changing this value of i. I'm saying i plus plus, maybe after some time I'm assigning the value for i to six. I can change this value, right? And it is actually useful to mutate a value. And of course, that's what we do with data processing, right? So when I say you got data, you want to process it, most of the time you might want to uh, change the value of your variable. And that makes sense, right? So that is mutation. But then if you remember, when we talked about strings, uh, we have mentioned that strings are immutable, right? So there, there are some concepts which, which makes them immutable. So which is good, mutation or immutability. Uh, at this point, if you, if you can change something, mutation looks good, right? So yeah, so till this point, mutation looks good. But then let's try to discuss something more. What about threads? Our threads are good, of course, if you want to make things faster, threads are good. But then what if you mix both of this? What if you are doing mutation with multiple threads? Will this work? So what I'm saying is, what if you have two threads, let's say T1 and T2, and both are trying to work with the same variable i. So t1 changes the value of i, t2 changes the value of i. Now it will create instability in your code. I mean, think about this, but what if you just have one bank account and you got two cards, two debit cards? Of course, as a single person, you cannot use two cards at the same time. But what if you have given the other card, mind you, I'm talking about the same account. So we have one bank account and we have two cards. What if you give one, one of the card to your friend and then you went to two different ATM machines, okay? And now you are trying to uh, withdraw the money. So let's say you, in your account, you have 10,000 rupees and both of you at the same time, at the same second, you try to withdraw the money. You try to withdraw, let's say 7,000, 7,000. So in total, you're trying to withdraw 14,000 rupees. The balance is only 10,000 rupees. So that's an issue, right? If you try to do things simultaneously. And we'll also do that in the code as well, just to see what happens. So threads and mutation together is not a good idea. Okay, and that's why if you are working with threads, always try to make sure that you work with data which are immutable. Or if you think that there's a method which, is, which can do some mutation, make it thread safe. Now, what is the concept of thread safe? So thread safe simply means, so if I say thread safe, Thread safe simply means that only one thread can work with that at one point. Example, if you have a method, let's say show, and the show method, so there are two methods who are going to call show, T1 and T2. So only one of them can be able to get into show at one time. So if T1 is executing show, T2 cannot execute show. Okay, that's the restriction we can add. But how? Let's see that in the code here. So what I will do is, uh, first of all, I will remove these two threads, or maybe I, we can just use these two threads as they are. So you can see we got two threads here. The only thing is I want to make sure uh, the iteration is not for five, the iteration is there for, let's say, 1,000. And maybe uh, I don't want to print something, I don't want to apply a sleep method, let's keep it clean. And let me just clip this clean as well. So you can see we got two threads and both are doing something. But as of, as of now, you can see we are not writing any code here. The for loop is basically empty. So what we can basically do here is, first of all, what I want to achieve, just a very simple thing. Let's say I have a class here called counter. And in this counter, basically, I have a method which is public void increment. Okay, so that's the increment method we have. And then let's also create a variable. So let's say the variable is count. 
okay? And by default, the value for count will be zero because that's an instance variable. And then inside this increment, I'm just saying count plus plus, okay? So basically what we have is we have a class called counter and in this we have a variable called count. And then every time someone calls increment, it will be doing count plus plus. And of course, if I call increment once, the value for count will be one. If I call increment 10 times, the value of count will be 10, right? But then what I will do now is I'm going to call this counter or this, this increment method multiple times. So before we even used it, let me create the object of counter. I will say counter uh, C is equal to new counter. And then from this two threads, what we have, we can simply say C dot increment. So basically I'm going to call increment multiple times. Now you tell me how many times we are going to call it. So of course I'm going to, I'm saying that increment in both the threads and each thread is going to do this increment, increment for thousand iterations, right? Now when I say thousand and thousand, in total this increment will be called for 2000, right? Okay, let me just reiterate. We have two threads. Each thread is calling increment thousand times. So in total, the increment will be called 2000 times, right? So if I go back here and after it starts, I just want to print the value of count. Let's see what the, what's the current value of count is. Now you tell me what will be the current value of count. So if I compile and run, now when I run this code, I want this to be 2000, right? Let's say what happens. Oh, it's only 116. The weird thing is every time you run this code, you will get a different output for this. What's happening? See, what we are trying to do here is, let me just do that on my pad here. See, we've got a main thread, right? This is your main thread. And on line number uh, 34 and 35, what we are doing is we are creating two, two new threads. We got T1 and T2. Now T1 jobs is to call increment thousand times, right? And T2 job is to call increment thousand times. And ultimately we want this count variable to be around 2000, right? But the thing is, the main is doing nothing, right? Main, in main we are saying, hey, just print the value of count. Now we were expecting that T1 and T2 will complete their work and then main will print count. But that's not the case. Anyway, this two, we have two threads, right? T1, T2, and they are running any, anyway. Now, with, when these two threads are running in any case, now T1 and T2, are the, they are running, right? Main is doing nothing. So main says, okay, my job is done. I have started these two threads, and now I will simply print the value of count. So in between the iterations, maybe T1 has done some iterations, T2 has done some iterations, main is printing count anyway. We have to ask main, hey, you know, don't print count here let them come back. So as main continues, let them come back. Let T1 and T2 complete their work by doing 100 iterations. When T1 comes back and T2 comes back, after this, just try to print the value of count and I'm sure at that point, the count will be 2000. So what I can do is, uh, how do I ask main to wait for T1, T2? So one thing you can do is, you can say T1.join. Now join is a special method which allows your main thread to wait for the other two threads to come back and join. Okay, so if at this point, if you want to wait for these two threads, you can use join there. Okay, but the only thing is join may throw an exception. So I can uh, simply say add throws declaration. You can see we got throws exception. Anyway, we have done with the join and now I think it should be good. We should be able to see 2000. So if I compile and run, oh, Okay, we were expecting 2000, but we got, okay, now we got 2000. Now we got 1746. And that's why, you know, threads are sometimes be unpredictable because they have a different behavior and unfortunately cannot control directly. Uh, so what is happening here? The example which we have taken before, uh, which was about the bank account, it is possible then when we have two threads, so we got T1 and T2, they both are executing the same method. And in this method, what is happening? So when I say increment, it is actually getting the value of count. If you see, we are saying count plus plus, right? It's actually two steps. First, it will get the value of count, the current value of count. And then it will say, okay, count is equal to count plus one, because that's how count plus plus works, right? 
So there are two steps, get the value for count and whatever new value you get, just add it with one and then assign it to count back. So let's say when T1 reaches to count, the value of count is zero, right? So if I just say this is the count value is zero, then zero plus one is one. So the new count value is one. Again, if we trade this part, so this will be one, the value of count is one, right? So T2 goes there, T2 says, okay, uh, give me the value of count. It says one plus one is equal to two. Now again, T1 goes back, T1 says, okay, new value is two. I will say two plus one is equal to three. And that's how the iteration should go, right? But what if both the threads reaches to this count at the same time? So let's say T1 and T2, both are reaching to the count at the same time. They both got the value, which is three. They both said, okay, three plus one is equal to four. We got two iterations. I mean, we, we called increment two times, but the incremented happens only once. Okay, that's what happens when you have two threads working with the same variable or shared variable. Oh, okay, so mutation and threads are not good. And every time you run this, you will get different output. Now, how do you make this consistent? Okay, you might be thinking why we got 2000 years because maybe your threads are not going to the increment at the same time. Okay, so that's not the case. In fact, if you go with a bigger number, if I go with 10,000 and 10,000, you can see it will lose a lot of different uh, bits in between compile and run you can see 7000 we are losing 7000 values we got 9 8000 values lost right and the chances of getting 20000 is way less now so the point is this is not a good way now how do you make sure that only one thread works with that at one time that's what you can do right so example when t1 is working with increment t2 cannot work with increment okay so t2 has to wait in that case you can use a very simple keyword you can use a keyword called synchronized you just use this one keyword uh, your java will make sure that this increment will be called only by one method at a time so if t1 is working with increment t2 has to wait uh, so if i compile this code now and run you can see we got 20,000. now it doesn't matter how many times you run this you will get 20,000 because now both the threads are not going to the, that method at the same time that's how we used two threads with the shared variables and you make them as synchronized. So basically we saved ourselves from the race condition.